Right. So I want to be this. I'll be teaching on what is going to be a series. Okay. The leaders and this thing, the leader and this things. But let me start with experience. Now, the leader and his experience, all right, if you must make enduring impact, you do need some experience in the ministry because we are in the ministry context. So mm. this book has to do with, um, with ministry knowledge, but it also covers other aspects of leadership. You, know, mm. you can take the same principle, apply it in your business, and it will work for you. Amen. Amen. So if, if you must make an enduring impact in your field of calling, you must desire to have an experience. Hello, somebody. Therefore, yep. every leader or aspiring leader should pass through apprenticeship or appreciate times of apprenticeship in the ministry. Yep. When, I'm, when, the word appren when I'm talking of apprenticeship, I'm talking of learning to save. But yeah. God, have you seen a lot of people today are jumping out of churches to go and establish a church? Most of those people have never saved in any capacity in the church where they are. They did not contribute anything. They did not impart any life. How do you think that you'll be able to impart life if you mm. leave that current church where you are when mm. you to go and establish your own church if you've never ever imparted when you were in that church, in your previous yeah. church? Right. So it is important that everyone, every man or woman that senses the calling of God in their life to have a common, a common experience in that area of interest. Mm. And, and how will you have an experience? You have it by being an apprentice. Serving is a way of, you know, becoming an apprentice. Hello, somebody. Mm. I said here, therefore, every leader or aspiring leader should pass through apprenticeship or appreciate times of apprenticeship in their ministry. So that place you are serving now, and that, you know, maybe you're serving the worship team, maybe you're serving leadership, you're serving ministry, maybe you're serving the ministry, maybe serving the choir, you are actually, you know, doing your apprentice time. Mm. because he doesn't know what God might be doing with you in the next few days or months or years. So at, at where you are, God is testing you, is testing your heart. He's seeing how you are serving. Mm. And if you do well today, hello somebody, if you do well in your current position, he's going to use what you've learned to impart your world in the future and what he's calling you to do. Mm. But a lot of people today, they don't want to sit and save. Yeah. Nobody wants to save in our, in our, in, in our, you know, our current time world. Everybody wants to be a boss. Everybody wants to be a leader. But mm. how can you lead when you've not been led? Yeah. And most believers, sometimes they are very rebellious in, in areas God has positioned them to serve in the church. The mm. thing they are doing it for the pastor, not knowing that God positioned them in that position to learn skill, learn ministry skill, learn future skill, as to build their future. Mm. And most of them serve from a rebellious point of view. They serve from disobedient point of view, thinking they are doing it for the man of God. Yeah. I even say to people, when you get a job, don't, no work as though you are working for your boss. You don't work to gain skill. If you are a, a, a child of God, even if, if you are an unbeliever, once you, you you are given an employment in any given company, you, your focus should not be to end salary at the end of the month. Your mm. focus to be you no know, to gain skill to be able to produce what you are doing. Hello, somebody. But for so many leaders. Um, Pastor Mike, Mike, I can see you. I hope, I hope people can still hear me. Yes, yes, can right. hear you. I, I was so, just, just, I'm here. But, but so many people, they think that becoming a leader is to, is to be in the four walks of the ministry. Mm. All right? Or to be in the forefront of the ministry. Being in the forefront of the ministry doesn't make you a leader. What makes yeah. you a leader is the skill you've acquired over the years. Mm. Now, I said here, experience cannot be underestimated in leadership, and those who are experienced should be appreciated. Mm. When you see men and women that are highly experienced in the field God has called you to function, you must appreciate their time. 
you know, mm. must appreciate, you know, their person, you must appreciate their calling and appreciate what they are or what they meant for you. You see, you've got to understand that experience does not just come from the, you know, from the moon. <laughs> mm. Yeah. All of a sudden you are experience. Experience is it, it worth so much. It costs so much. Because it costs, that means it what? Mm. It wants something to gain experience. Do you know that if you cannot lead above your experience, mm. your experience is your revelation. Mm. I always say that nobody can grow above the revelation they do have about themselves. Mm. So your revelation becomes the basis for your success, become the basis for your growth. Wow. Because nobody ever lead beyond themselves. Mm. It is not possible. Hello, you cannot touch. I, I'm. I cannot. For me to touch the roof of this building, I got to jump. And sometimes mm. I'm even jump without being able to touch it. Yeah. So you cannot certainly become a great leader as and a, or a successful leader if you don't have an experience. Mm. So it is incumbent of every believer. It is a spirit that every believer, you know, as you save. Your intention should be to gain experience in that area of interest. Mm. In that area you're serving, because you just know what God may be doing with you in the future. You don't know where mm. God may be calling you to save. So when I see men, that is why I honor men that have gone ahead of us, men of God. If you see this man that have served in the ministry for, for 40 years, 50 mm. years, Yep. Such men should never be shaken. When you shake them, don't shake them with two one hands. I, mm. When I see people like that, I always shake them with two hands. Mm. Those men have gone through fire and through water, yet they are not consumed. They have gained solely the spirit for the body of Christ. Wow, wow. So if you see people who do not attach value to a spirit, they are just foolish. Mm. It is foolishness not to attach value to, to people that have an experience. Mm. Not to attach value to what they have gone, over, what have been through over the years, or what they have learned over the years. Wow. Yesterday I was telling our, 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 our people, was it yesterday, that a great man of God I respect so much, say, I respect so much said. He said, you should never dishonor whom God has honored. Wow. It's, it is foolishness to dishonor men that God have not dishonored. It is mm. foolishness to dishonor people God have not dishonored. Wow. In every nation, in every city, in every community, there are men and women God honors. Heaven esteems them. Mm. They have been esteemed by the Lord. So when you see them and say, we are human beings too, are we not women? You'll be making a mistake because there is reason. There's always reason. God honors mm. his people. Mm. When uh, uh, Daniel encountered an angel, the angel told him, he said, Daniel, you've been esteemed. You are a man highly esteemed in heaven. Mm. There are men that live in this world, though they are here, but they have become a system. They are not just men. They are a, a system in the eyes of God. Mm. They are the, a structure God is building, you know, to hold too many things in this realm. This mm. men and women host God's glory. Yeah. yeah. So when we see such men, we should value their experience. We should pay. We should uh, attach importance to what they represent. One of the reasons young generation are not reproducing <laughs> what our fathers did in the past is because we are not honoring who they are today. Mm. We've not paid attention to what they represent. We've not paid attention to, to what they achieved and, and how they achieved it. And this is one of the reasons most young ministers are not going too far. Because yeah. they have not sought to listen from men that has done twice what they are trying to do once. Mm. A great man of God, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, is from Nigeria. A great man of God has changed his world. He shifted things in his time. He said, learn from men that has done twice what you're trying to do once. Wow. A lot of time, we just jump into things when we don't even have the template, we don't have the platform. But mm. there are people out there that have got the template on how to get those things rolling. Mm. 
And if we know them, we should anchor. We should reach out to them. We should honor what they carry because they have experience. Yeah. yeah. You see, experience is the key for maximum impact. Hello, somebody. Experience is the key for maximum maximum impact. It was, you know, inexperience that caused the inability of the disciples to deliver the boy with a damped spirit. Mm. It's not only because um, they were not um, because they were not fasting and praying. I'm going to show you something as we read that scripture. One of the reasons they were not able to deliver the young man with seizure is because they were not experienced. Hello, somebody. Um, <laughs> I want to quickly show you the scripture at the book of um, the book of Mark 9, 14 to 25. They did not probe the case. You know, when that case was brought to them, they never probed it. And when he came to the disciples, he, he saw a great multitude around them and described disputing with them. Immediately, when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribe, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son. I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He forms at the mark, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So mm -hmm. I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. And they are ministered and men, men of God to them, believers that are not able to do stuff. They ought to be doing because they lack experience. He mm. answered him and said, Oh, fatal generation, how long shall I be with you? How mm. long shall I be with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the grass and wallowed, foaming at his mouth. So he asked his father, What is this? So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. You see, Jesus did not just jump into that deliverance. Hello, somebody. Mm. From, if you look at verse 21 to 25, he interrogated the father. He investigated. Hello. Even though the spirit saw him and started, you know, the boy started convulsing, so Jesus did not rush to lay his hands on the young man. He mm. inquired and asked the father, how long has this been? He's inquiring mm. because he wanted to use that information for what he, he was about doing. Mm. But when they brought that young man to the disciples, they all rushed to lay hands on him mm. and to cast out the demon. But Jesus did not do that. Mm. He investigated the matter. And why is it so? Because Jesus was the spirit. Hello, somebody. See, thereby, you know, when he when he asked that question, what did he do? He seized the problem. After that investigation, he laid hand and cast out that demon. Hello, somebody. Hmm. Yeah, now, let's, yeah. let's remove the scripture. Joshua could not pick the you no know, the sand in the camp from afar. Hello, somebody, because of inexperience. Mm. But Moses did because he had been in the system of leading men and leading men and leadership things longer than Joshua had. That is called experience. Some of you know this story. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people and they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But 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 most but he said, Moses said, it is not the noise of the shout. Of victory, nor the noise of the cry of David, but the sound of singing I hear. Remove that scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, well, you, you, you can remove the scripture for now, just for now. No, I mean, you see, when Moses Moses went to the mountain, you know, to get the law for the people, he went there to receive the law for them. So, because he was you know, a bit late coming, he didn't come back on time. He didn't return on time. These guys be began to worship all that thing. They start he he living a hedonistic life. Lose somebody. Start living in merriment and start worshiping idol. Hmm. More than idol and worshiping idol because of impatience. 
So when Moses was on his way back, it seemed to me that Joshua waited below the mountain. Mm. While Moses was, I know, at the top oh, or on top of the mountain, you know, talking with God for 40 mm. days. Shuba. So when he came down from the mountain, Joshua joined him to go back to the camp. So while they were going, they could hear a strange sound, very strange. Mm. And Moses quickly interpreted it. And Moses said, this is the sound of, of, um, of music or something like that. And the man of God, Moses said, no, this is not the sound of, um, uh, no, no, I think Joshua said, this is the sound of war. The man of God said, no, this is not the sound of war. Hello, or anything, but this is the sound of singing. They are singing. It's a sound of strange singing, strange songs. But Joshua could not, you know, pick that up. Hello, somebody. And he's thinking, he thought it was a different sound. But mm. Moses could pick that sound up from afar. Experience helps you to pick sounds up. Even though the sound may be a strange sound, it could be a very strange sound, but you could still pick it up from afar just because you are experienced. You've been in that field for a very long time. A lot of people today do not know how to pick certain sounds sound up from afar. They don't know how, how to be able to design things from afar because they are not experienced. But an experienced man knows how to design things from afar. Hmm. So we saw that Moses could say, look, even though I'm not there in the camp yet, but I know that this is not a sound of war. It's, it's a different sound. But Moses, Joshua said, no, 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 this is the sound of war. But the man of God said, no, I can tell you this is a different sound. Many of us today do not know how to peruse into spiritual sounds mm. because we are not experienced. Hmm. So every child of God, every man of God, do need a spirit. And this is why you need to save your time of serving in the kingdom. Your time of serving a man of God, other men of God. Your time of honoring other leaders. It's time of experience. It's time of apprenticeship. It is time of learning. Mm. And if you don't do it today, you may not know what to do tomorrow. If you don't save today, tomorrow may be too late for you to learn. Hello, somebody. So we've got to start appreciating experience. Amen. Moses was a system. He was not just an ordinary man. He was not just a, a, a common Israelite. He became mm. a system in the hand mm. of God. Yeah. Because he was quite experienced. This is a guy that killed an Egyptian. Yeah. And by the time he, he knew he was licked. In the country, the story was all over the place. He ran without knowing where to go, find himself in the desert, not knowing what to do, what, yet was trusting God for favor. The sons of Jethro, the daughters of Jethro met him in the desert by the reason of him helping them. They went, mm. they, they went home and told the fa their father, we met a man, a kind man who helped us. The man said, why didn't you bring him home? From palace, he went, you know, went, went to the extent of taking care of sheep. Became a shepherd, a man that was raised in a palace. He know what it means to live in a palace mm. and what it means to live in the bush, taking care of sheep, rams, and bulls. Unless somebody, with all after all this, he returned with the Lord when the guy when the Israelites were crying out in Egypt, and the Lord was looking for a man that have got what it takes to raise, to build, and to mold them. Mm. If he looked for a man that, that have tested the palace. And also tested the life of a common man. And the person he, he went after, the person he went for was Moses. Because he knew that Moses have got what it takes. Even though he, from time to time he complained of his pressure. But if he hadn't, you know, sat in his spirit, he could not have lasted for one day. It was one of the most toughest work you can ask a man to do. Mm. Hello, somebody. Going to like brave people who believed in you today and never believed tomorrow. Today yeah. they are for you, the next day they are against you. And you're still working hard to liberate them or to liberate them from the hand of Pharaoh. If Moses had not been through you know, all sort of things, you know, he killed, uh, he was actually doing it for the Lord and for his people. He ran away and became a fugitive. And then mm -hmm. somehow he started raising 
or taking care of bulls and rams. He could not have been a strong leader. Mm. Those things he did qualified him to be called. Many of us today have been called but not chosen yet. I'm mm. telling you, man of God, so many people are still in the realm of being called. God is still mm. watching if he's going to choose them. And that mm. is why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah, wow. Wow. So, so what, when we are serving in churches, what, you know, serving leaders, helping them to do, you know, to, to run the vision, God is watching if we are ministry material. At that time, you are called, but not chosen yet. If you mm. serve with craftiness, heaven is records it. And if you serve with open heart, with heart of, of purity and cleanliness, hello, somebody, heaven records it. For I believe that every day as we gather in the presence of God, that is a, a spiritual register in heaven. Mm. The angels of God that mans in our, around the in nook and cranny of the church where we serve, they are always there with their register to, to record how you are seven in the house of the Lord. Mm. And I keep saying this thing that, that God is not interested in JP Morgan. And listen, somebody, God is not interested in Bank of America or in Wall Street. God is interested in his church. Because mm. the only thing God has, the only property, the only greatest thing God has on earth is the church of Jesus Christ. Wow. That's so if you are you know serving with craftiness and and relating to your ministers with craftiness and always today you are in the next day you are out the next day you today you are happy the next day you are angry you are hurting yourself mm. because this is man god has released to help you from your egypt egypt experience or egyptian experience yeah so when you are serving in the house of God or even at your workplace, you must be there to learn the spirit. Know that you, God is maturing you. God is building you. You are mm. not doing it for the pastor. I used to say to our people, I think Moses, uh, uh, Moses never went back to Egypt because he wanted to go back to Egypt, men of God. Mm. He was wanted. He was the most, he, he was a wanted criminal in Egypt. So yeah. he was not in his desire to return back to Egypt. Mm. He lost somebody because he was declared a wanted man. It was the, the desire of the people that called him back to Egypt prophetically. Mm. Egyptian, the, the people of Israel were crying and, and said, Lord, we need help. We need deliverance. And mm. God said, look, I've heard a cry of my people and I've come mm. down to deliver them. And how did he come down? He came down through man. Yeah. yeah. He sent him a man. He sent Moses. Actually, you see, if you look at that scripture, God said, and I, I, I have come down to deliver them. And you'll be wondering, okay, did God come, you know, he, he came down physically? Did he come down physically? No, he came down through women. Oftentimes we resist men. We resist mm. people who have God. God is walking through them because of rebellion. Yeah. 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 And some of the time, you know, God will walk through men on your behalf. If you resist them, you resist your miracle. You resist your glory. You resist your power. You resist your promotion. Mm. So many people are praying, Lord, promote me, Lord. And God place them in the place of promotion and they blow it up. They keep resisting people that has become system or a structure in the hand of God on their behalf. Mm. most wow. people are not where they are today because god has not blessed them it's just because they have refused to recognize the mm. time of their vindication through man hello somebody so it is expedient that we save with all our heart anytime you're serving hello in the kingdom serving men you are actually serving god mm. if you look at the book the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. When God was introduced, talking, when God wanted to hand over to Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Even in, in you know, even in death, God still recognizes Moses as his servant. Could you imagine? Mm. In other words, God honors his servants. Mm. So if God honors his servant, who are you man not to honor whom God have honored? Mm. Yeah, and, and so if you are successful, it can be traced in the person or what you've been, what you've chosen to honor. 
If you are failing in life, it, is, it can be traceable to what you, are, you have dishonored. A lot of people today are not doing well and are not going too far because they have refused to honor those God have chosen to honor. Mm. The yeah. angel looked at Daniel and said, Daniel, you are a man highly esteemed in mm. heaven. They were telling Daniel how they view him from heaven. Some people do not know there are men on the, in this realm that God have highly esteemed the heaven. Mm. They are agency in which God uses to channel his will to the earth. Hello, somebody. They, they have become a platform. That is why God, the Bible says, look at Abraham, you know, your father, and Sarah, your mother, whom gave you birth. Say, when I called mm. him, he was but one. I blessed him, and I made him many. He said, look at him. He said, if you look at him and observe what I've done in his life, you can become, if you honor what I've done in his life. Mm. Every time God wants to change, in, uh, change a man, sometimes he connects you to somebody that is already that platform you are believing him for. If you are waiting until, until you've heard the voice of angel from heaven, you may never become. Mm. So from time to time, you're trusting God. Father, I want to be an engineer. I want to be a successful engineer. I want to be a successful broadcaster. I want to be a successful preacher. God will connect you to another preacher that have platform and, and cause you to learn from him. Mm. Yeah, it could be through proximity, it could be through distant learning, but cause you to learn how he how he has what he what he has experienced over the years. The things he has done good or the areas he has done bad or good. From time to time, God will connect you to men whom he caught or he has he has you know seen or known or uh, or labeled as structure on the mm. in, you know, on this earth or in this earth. Certain men are, are, and women are God's structures. Mm. No, for his kingdom deliveries. Oh, I'm still working on this book. You see, there were two, there are two reasons Joshua was not able to pick the son. One, inexperience. Two, they were not his sheep, but Moses's. Hmm. One of the reasons he was not able to pick the son that Moses could pick from afar, because he was inexperienced. Secondly, those men were not those men and women were not his sheep. He was not asked to lead them directly from God. God wow. asked Moses to lead these people, not Joshua. So it is, it is easy for Moses to pick them to pick what is happening with them and in them, because God has given him the grace to cover these people, so mm -hmm. he knows how they float. But Joshua couldn't pick the son because the mantle was not on him. Many of us today have taken what God has given to other men to lead. And that is how we are not succeeding. Anytime you take what was not given to you to lead, you will struggle all your life. Mm. Let's somebody. Do you know that some people, they go to church and they break that church, some pastors, to start their own church? They take the sheep God has not given to them. Mm. And those sheep, they will never, no matter what you do, they will never obey you because they are not your sheep. And wow. they're not going to last there. They may be there for six months, one year, they will all be gone. If yeah. After 10 years, after three years, when you look back, you will discover that those people are no longer there with you because they are not the sheep. They don't know you. They are not your sheep. They, God did not give them to you to lead. They don't know your voice. You wow. steal them. Mm. Well, somebody. So this is one of the reasons you we must be careful on how we lead. We must be careful on how we approach things. Often it's important we take time to learn. Learn from men that has done done twice what you are trying to do once. Learn from mm. such men. Experience is valuable. Experience is currency. Experience mm. is money. Yeah. Anytime, anytime yeah. we go to other secular psychologists, secular counselors, sometimes they ask us $100 for an hour, $100. Mm. And so many people are paying $300 per hour to see a psychologist, mm. to see a secular counseling, secular marriage counseling, secular psychologist, just to fix the problem. Hello, somebody. 
and we pay but in the church we don't pay the pastors that is why we don't mm -hmm. value sometimes we don't value their time mm. when you change the man of god the man of god if he's not able to test you on time you're angry you know yeah. you just yeah. said oh the pastor is not even caring if you're paying for it you will not even you will not take it for granted mm. <laughs> one of the reason most people do not value their ministers today is because they have access to them hmm. you must never take for granted an access god has given to you for the fact that you have that access does not mean that other people have that access too hmm. for the fact that a man or a woman have given you an access in their life does not mean that that access is easy to be given to other people or it was hmm. given to other people yeah wow it is a blessing to have access to the to in the life of people that matters whether you like it or not, there are people that matters. And in heaven, the crown is not going to be the same. The crown will be according to contribution. There are men that will have more crown than other men. Women that will have more crown than other women. Know that about it. So it is foolishness to think that you are equal with such people. The truth of the matter is we are equal in salvation, but we are not equal in reward. Yeah. So if I know a people that we may have more reward, I will go back to them and say, man, teach me. How are you doing this? How come the, the Lord is pleased with you? I want to know. I should not consider myself to be cool with them. <laughs> Even in heaven, there are hierarchy. Hello, somebody. When we are talking of Trinity, we begin with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Even though we, we, the three are in one and they are one, Yet we still observe the hierarchy. Mm. And this is what people do not know. Oftentimes they neglect what God has honored. It is mm. foolishness to neglect those whom God has honored or lifted. Mm. The best thing to do is go to them and learn what they know that you don't know. Why is it that God called David the apple of my eyes? What is it about David? There must be something David knows. There must be something David knows about assessing the heart of God than, that, you know, than some of us do. Wow. Oh, Rabbi Shaprato. Yeah. If you look at the book of John, chapter 10, 14 to 15, John, chapter 10, 14 to 15, men of God, are you able to help me with our scripture? Thank you, sir. All right. You see, and when Joshua, I, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and, and, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my love for the sheep. What is, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep and I am known by my own. Some ministers are not known by their members. <laughs> As the Father knows me, so I know the Father. Some ministers are not known by their members. The reason is because they are pastoring strange people. People they are not called the pastor. Mm. The reason Joshua could not pick the voice the voice of Amakushi Pradiando, the voice, I mean, the sound of what was happening in the camp. It was, was because those ships were not his. Mm. Therefore, he didn't know their voice. He wow. couldn't, you know, sense what was happening in the camp. Wow. But mm. Moses could sense, could pick it up from afar, even though he was not there present. Mm. Because those ships were his. They know his voice and he knew them too. Yeah. So many pastors are pastoring strange, strange followers. They are pastoring multitude. And what if you do for a minister watching, pray that God give you, you know, so, you know uh, souls after his own heart. Those that he has called you to pastor. The most, the worst thing that will happen to any man or to any woman is to pastor people you are not called to pastor. They will frustrate you out of your calling. <laughs> <laughs> at the time you'll be wondering if you are called to do that job mm. if you pass to the wrong people you will struggle you may say who is wrong are they not children of god yes everyone everyone you've got to understand that everyone is created by god god created everyone but everyone is not child of god we mm. are all created by him but we are not all children of god yeah so there are people that maybe were pastored by Pastor Mark. I may not be able, be able to pastor no matter what I do. There may be people I may be able to pastor that he may not be able to pastor. Hmm. So that is why every man of God must go 
after whom God has given to them. Yeah. And that is why I, you don't have to fight for people to stay. Sometimes once they have expressed the, you know, their intention to go, leave them, let them go. If you don't let them go, they will cause you most pain. They will create more layers of problem for you. And at the yeah. end of the day, they will still leave. Yeah, true. At the time they start expre expressing the interest to leave, if you don't leave them, I guarantee you, it will cause you more pain as a minister. Mm. And at the end of the day, one, that voice is already in their mind. They want to go. They will, no matter what you do, they will still go. Wow. One man of God said, anytime they, some folk express the intention to leave, he asked them to leave that day. <laughs> <laughs> it may sound extreme, but sometimes you can't help it. Yeah. If we will not treat, the cancer is going to spread. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes we need to do what we have to do. Yeah. To save the work, to save the calling. Yep. True. Now, I'm, I'm going to conclude soon. You cannot lead properly without experience. Mm. It's not possible. Hello, somebody. That is the reason you need Moses. Everyone needs Moses in order to have experience. Yeah. That is why we need spiritual fathers. A lot of people do not believe in spiritual fatherhood. Mm. Let's remember when you think of you know they say who is the spiritual God is my spirit. God, the Bible says, call no one father. But but Moses, even Paul at many times mentioned that, that that Timothy was his son. Yeah, true. But many people that claim to be spiritual today, they try to um you know discard. That realm of you know relationship, they say, mm -hmm. Who is your spiritual father? No, call no one father. And when you hear people say stuff like that, run away from them. If you are friend to them, just run because that is an indication of rebellion. It shows that they have you know they are capable of being rebellious. Mm. I don't know if I'm making sense, God's people. Yeah, very good. Very so good. you know, you cannot live properly with that experience. That is the reason you need Moses. You no, know, mm -hmm. your Moses are those who have done twice what you are trying to do once. Mm -hmm. Your Moses are those who have done twice what you're trying to do once. From wow. time to time, you need mm -hmm. Moses that, that are ahead of you. There is always something to learn from them if we humble ourselves before them. You know, mm -hmm. somebody, there is no doubt that there are people that have done twice what you're trying to do, do once. No doubt about it. So instead of you trying to cut a new path, Go and learn from their own platform. Mm. Instead of you trying to cut, you know, cut a new path. I, I, I live in East Auckland here. If I want to go to the city, city, I don't need to go and start cutting a new motorway. Try to cut a new path for myself. All I need to do is to apply on the already path that is there. It makes it mm. easy for me to get to the city on time. But yeah. if I must cut a new path for myself, it's going to take me years to get there. Many of us are not maximizing the, wow. the prophetic platform God has already ordained for us. The Bible says, all that was written in our full time was written mm. for our learning and for our understanding. So that through the encouragement of the scripture, we might have hope. The book of Romans chapter 5, chapter 15, verse 4. It said, all that was written in the past, all that was written in the Bible. He said, it was, it was written for your learning and for your understanding. So that through the encouragement of the scripture, you might have hope. It was not everything that was written was not written for Jesus. Mm. It was not written for the, the, the angels in heaven. It was written for, for those of us or to those of those of us that are alive today. So that we can learn from this, from the already made platform and become what God wants us to be. Mm. If you see any man that have made an impact today, these are men and women. They have learned through patience. They have learned through endurance. They have learned through sacrifice and, and by paying a enormous price. Mm. Therefore, we must respect greatness. When yeah. you see people that are great and refuse to respect them, all you're saying, I don't want to be great. And you've got to understand that you cannot become what you do not respect. Mm. You cannot become what you, you despise. It is impossible. Yeah. So, as in New Zealand, I've written a book called the, the, the Language of Honor. I, re, I wrote that book because I discovered that in this nation, people struggle to honor. Mm. In the parliament, 
They told them honorable member of the parliament. We mm. call them MP. And in the parliament, before they he said, this honorable member went to speak, they the people are showing honor in the parliament, and they are the face of the nation. But in the church, a pastor will just reduce his name. He said, Oh, just, just call me Mike. Just call me Mike. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's calling them Mike, even the baby, they become uncomfortable. Mike, Mike, Mike. I'm not trying to say they don't he can't be called by your name. But certain spiritual titles are not natural. They are mm -hmm. your titles sometimes represent the anointing you carry. It's mm -hmm. the title is them. Certain titles are mantle in this guys. Yeah. yeah. It carries a mantle. So when that title, when you are disconnected from that, that that mantle also disconnects from you. If mm. titles were not important, I'm not trying to say we should magnify title and say, tell everybody we have title. That's not what I'm talking about. But if we if we discount that from our calling, we discount the mantle that follows that calling. When he, when he go to um when he go to the uh. The, to the, the hospital, go to meet your GP. The GP will say, I'm, I'm so so doctor here. Da, da, da. They introduce themselves as doctors. When we see nurse, we call them nurse. Oh, this is a nurse. Hmm. Hello, somebody. We see policeman, we say, policeman. But when the pastors here in New Zealand say, Come in, come in, Mike, come in, come in, James, come in. That is, you are degrading the mantle that is attached to that title. Yeah. And this is why. People are no longer honoring, even in the church, because the power of God cannot move in yeah. the church unless there is honor to the to the man that is pilot of that organization. Yeah. One of the reasons the Lord is moving mightily in places like Africa is because they honor their leaders. And yeah. I'm not trying to say leaders should abuse their position or should be looking for somebody to honor them. That, yeah. That's not what I mean. But one of the reasons any church where you experience honor hello somebody stable honor no yes. when the people honor those that are, are anointed you know called to lead you will always witness the move of the spirit in such you know local churches but then for you to see, know that the power of god is not or does not manifest in certain churches is to watch how the people approach their pastor how the people reach out to the pastor how the people honor their pastors hmm. Once you say that those members of that local church do not honor their men of God, you already know that the power of God can manifest in such atmosphere. Mm. It's not possible. Yeah. Now honor stays the glory. It stays up something in the spirit. In the spirit. And so, and many of us today are even the part of the problem. We are ministers. We can't hold our ground. We don't know how to stand on our ground and say, this is what the Lord says, and that's what I'm, I'm going to do. Whether you like it or not, we've got to follow the will of God. Because the church of God, we do not run democracy. The church of God is the theocracy you know, government. Runs on theocracy government and not on democratic government. Hmm. It's the law somebody. And if we want to be too democratic, we will not do, do the will of God. Hmm. God dictates to us, and we share with the people. Yeah. So we must always, always, when we see men that have experience, we should not think if you if it takes you to 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 spend time to sex it, do anything you can do to assess their experience. But that's their experience is you would would become your platform in the future. Many years ago, the man I told my spiritual father, I followed him for 10, 10 years. He never gave me a call, he only sent me a message. I was the one that was always following him at the time. I was the one that was, I was always fully. After 13 years, one day he called me. I told him on the 1st of January, he didn't pick. Then he called me back. And he said to me, you have been faithful. You, you have yeah. been consistent. For 13 years, he called me after, after 13 years once. Only he sent me mail. He, on, he, he easily can send me. But he, I followed him without receiving his call for 13 years. Wow, wow, wow. I'm impressed. But when I didn't know he was watching me, I didn't know. When he called me that first of January, he said, you have been consistent. Hmm. So, folks, we've got to understand that greatness is not a child of accident. Greatness is not a child of struggle. You, you, you have to serve into it. It doesn't happen by whim. It doesn't happen by emergency. It doesn't happen by accident. You've got to serve into it. Hmm. If you don't save into greatness, you will never become great. Any man that is great today have saved. 
Wow. Men that are walking in uncommon greatness. These are men and, and women that have observed certain principles. Hello, somebody. So I said, I was just saying something. Remember, I said, your Moses are those who have done twice what you are trying to do once. They are those that are ahead of you. They have the needed capacity to interpret the sound of, of life in one second. These Moses that God has given you have the capacity to interpret the sound of life in one second. Sometimes they have the capacity to, to interpret the sound of your own life and to interpret your atmosphere. Mm. Hello, somebody. Oh, that you may not be able to, they can interpret the sound that you may not be able to interpret in 20 years. Because mm. you've not gained their kind of experience. You've not been through what they've been through. You've not gone through hell and through high waters. Experience doesn't happen because you're smart. Being smart doesn't make you wisdomable. So you've got to understand that if you see this Moses that being a lot somebody being in the palace, from palace to Isaiah, from Isaiah to the bush, to take care of lambs, rams. When you see such men, they deserve your honor, they deserve your respect. You're not wasting your time. You are rather learning, you are rather investing in your future. Mm. And finally, I said, I thought I would do more tonight, today, but I think I stopped it here. <laughs> Every leader should have a Moses for life. Every leader should have mm. a Moses for life and Jesus for eternity. Your Moses is your mentors. Your Moses is your teachers. Your Moses is your spiritual fathers. Your Moses is those who are steering you, to, you know, to a, to, the, to a right direction or to the right direction. So every man, yeah. even leader should have their own Moses. Every leader should have his own leader. Mm. So everyone, everyone should have a Moses for life and Jesus for eternity in order to have a massive impact in their destiny adventure. If you want to have a massive impact in your destiny adventure, you must at all time have your Moses for life and your Jesus for eternity. Wow. Without it, you can't go far. And all this principle I've shared is from this, this book, Leadership Insights for Leaders and Followers. I wrote it about three years ago. It has so much, you know, so much principle, a lot of principle in here. And I'm sure it's going to help you if you can acquire one for yourself. But all I want, all I want is to say, man of God, the kingdom success doesn't happen by whim. Kingdom yeah. success does not happen by whim. Any man of God that has succeeded, that is able to gather 500 people, 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 3,000, have a secret they do know that some other people do not know. Because it's so hard to even keep 50 people. Even to gather 50 people and minister to them for one year is a lot. It's even a lot to handle your own family. Maybe you have five mm -hmm. children. Two girls, one boy, of our three boys, one, two girls. Sometimes it's causing parents so much to lead them and to lead them right. How much more leading a congregation? Mm. And in every congregation, there will always be, you know, a multitude, you mm. know, mixed multitude. The people that does not actually belong to you or to the calling. But for you to be able to lead such organization, you need formidable. You need solid experience. Without it, you can't do it. Many pastors are crying today because they lack experience. And that is why even ministers are, ministers are committing suicide. Listen, I would not have been able finally to pastor a church here if I was not a pastor in the past, before I came to the country. Because mm. the dynamic was totally, totally different, men of God. The dynamic mm. of New Zealand is totally different. People mm. were very sensitive. And, and they don't see kingdom from my school of thought. Mm. So if I had not been in ministry before I came to New Zealand, I would have, I would have fared woefully. In fact, the first three years, our mm. ministry would have not gone beyond three years because we went through hell mm. and through water. In fact, my description, let me show you the scripture before I conclude. My description to what we went through is Psalm 66 verse 12. Man of God, you could help me with that scripture, Psalm Yep. John five three three. Yes, yeah, Sam. No, Sam. It's not here, but 
if you, it's not in your Psalms 66 verse 12, can anybody show it to me? I don't know. I saw somebody put a scripture down before, below. I don't know if it was you. That was my experience when we started in this nation. Psalm 6, I sorry. Easily, the, Psalms, Psalms 66 verse 12. David said, we've gone through water and through, and, and through fire. He said, but at last, you have brought us to away the place. Psalm 66 verse 12. For we have turned through water and through fire, Lord. He said, but at last you, blo you brought us to our, to our way, the place. Some scriptures say the place of fulfillment. And some, some translations say the place of abundance. In Psalm 66 verse 12. So when I came to this country and started what God has called us to do, it, it was like, Lord, Shabahandu, it's like God. I'm going through fire and through water. We went through fire and through and, and flood, but you brought on the place of great abundance. Many people do not wait for a place of ab abundance. They collapse, they fall, they fell in the place of the flood and fire because of lack of experience. So if you see men that have gone through fire and through flood, through fire and through water, and then and then endure to step into their worthy place, into their place of abundance, such men deserve honor, deserve to be honored. You've caused me to you've caused men to ride over our heads as a man of God, as a leader. People will ride over your head. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us to a rich fulfillment. Some scriptures say you brought us the place of abundance, and some says you brought us the place of wet, the place of fulfillment or the place of wet. So many people have, are not you no know, patient to, to get to that place of fulfillment, that place of work, that place of abundance because of lack of experience. If God mm. doesn't do it overnight, they quit. They quit. And this is what we must come into this realm, trust God to build us and trust God to, you know, to, to, to bring us to the end of his will. Mm. Then he has fallen apart because they lack experience. So this is all I have for today before we pray. I don't know, man of God, if you want to make some comment. Uh, may God bless his world in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, praise the Lord. So powerful. I'm so touched. I learned so many things today. <laughs> I feel in the Bible school again. So it's good. And uh, my brother and sister, this teaching really is so powerful. I want to encourage you to listen this from the beginning. You're going to be so blessed if you just join or otherwise uh, follow. And Pastor Apostle Prince is going to be with us once a month. Uh, as of now, but then he's going to be twice a month, hopefully. <laughs> so we are going to have a wonderful time with the Apostle Prince. And I, I, I like what you said. It's, it's so important because uh, why even for me, I think like sometimes we just too relax with wearing clothes too in the church. And we, I'm not saying like we should be too like... Uh, too much but we should wear good clothes as, as a, mm -hmm. as a leaders and then mm -hmm. uh, i was just thinking about one uh, story uh, it's happened to me uh, lord rebuked me in i think in 20 2016 2017 sometime i went to attend a conference and i was sitting in the back and uh, some leaders they came and they they saw me sitting there and they said to me pastor mark we want you to come in the front and i said no 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 i'm okay here sitting and lord rebuked me he said when i was honoring you mm. was honor and you didn't take it and mm. i know like it's, i i was just okay i was i was really i was not looking like i was not waiting someone will come mm. from the front lord say they were yeah. honoring you and you didn't go <laughs> And sometimes we have to be we, we have to be thankful and we should uh, we should receive when people give us honor and we should give honors to our seniors and and spiritual fathers. I really appreciate this. And uh, this make me to call my spiritual father again because I, I, I didn't talk with him for a long time, not because of yeah. anything, but like we busy with everything, uh, our things. But I want to call him back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> But I'm going, you know, sometimes we reject honor, not yeah. because we don't want it, yeah. but we pretentiously reject honor when God is honoring, honoring us. Just like, mm. could you imagine when God said, Moses, Joshua, you are the one to take over. And Joshua said, no, 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 no. You know, it's like rejecting the position God has ordained for you from eternity. Mm. We are not trying to say we should go out and we know, we know there are many believers that they can beat everybody down to be honored. 
Yeah. Such honors and the honor that are not freely given to you is not even honor at all. Yeah. But I think we should also give the people the opportunity. Many years ago, the opportunity to honor us. Mm. Because sometimes we block the avenue of being honored or to being mm. honored. Many years ago, when while I was pastoring church in Mo, in Kalabojian in, in Korea, mm. and this lady, I know her situation. Anytime she came to bless me, I would always say, no, 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 no. Each time she come to bless me, I said, no, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. So one day she came to give me something. I rejected it because I was feeling for her. I, I was thinking she doesn't have enough. Mm. So she went, at that time, we don't have phone, you know, mobile phone everywhere here and there. So she mm. went to the phone booth and called me. And she said, man of God, you are stopping my blessing. Mm. And I didn't know that what she was bringing to me, because she was trusting God for conception. So she was coming to sow that seed in order for something to shift in her life, for mm. God to visit her. I didn't know that that was a prophetic seed. And I rejected it because I don't want to seem like a pastor who is getting, taking gifts from people. And I don't mm. want to also, I, I was also feeling for her. But I didn't know that I was tapping her blessing. So wow. in that situation, I did not give this lady the opportunity to sow into my life for her mm. own breakthrough. And I rejected it. Wow. And this is what we, we pastors do. Many pastors in this nation, I guarantee you, would love to be addressed with their title pastors. But mm. they pretentiously say, oh, don't come in. Oh, just come in, Mike. Come in, come in bimbo. Come in, great. You know, all those kind of things. What about yeah. the doctor? We call them doctors. Yeah. Yeah, when we meet police officer, we call them officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we say driver, we say drivers. Pilot. We call them, you know, he's a pilot. Yeah. I, I, I think I am agree. We should call with the title because it's, uh, it's not like... For the title's sake, but really honoring them, what who they are in their office, and uh, uh, giving them that way honor. I think we should call them pastor or apostles or prophet who God really pointed, and we should honor them. Because Pastor Mark, do you realize in the in the book of Ephesians chapter four, written from eleven to twelve, yep. the Bible said to some I gave, yeah, apostles, some yep. you know, uh, um, evangelists, some teachers, yes. some pastors. Mm. For the edifying, for the work of the ministry and for the perfection of the saints. Yeah. So God used, God himself specifically used those names. Yeah. It's not given by men. He said to some, I gave. In fact, ministers are not even the property of the church. Ministers are the gift to the church. Right. But it's a gift that God gave to the church. Yeah. True. There's so some, I gave apostles, teachers, prophets, mm. you know. No, uh, uh, pastors for the work of the ministry for the uh, defying of the saints. Mm. Now, how would you start discounting that? Because God gave it to you; it's a gift. Mm. Yeah. So you guys, you discount it from you in the name of false humility. Mm. I believe that title will never take you to heaven, hell, neither to heaven. However, yeah. yet it's a prophetic gift to you. It's a spiritual gift. It is a spiritual thing. Yeah. It's not just the name, but the mantle it it, it, it carries, the mantle it conveys. Mm. Yeah, true. Now, this does not mean that people should go and start looking for somebody to address them by their head. That's not what we're talking about. But what we're saying, the church should know that it's not for their own, for their best interest to reduce what God has honored or what God has given to us. Mm. Yeah, true. That's true. not spirituality. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I want to encourage you also, brother, sister. Uh, we can bless man of God buying. Uh, if, you, if the book, you can show this book again, uh, Apostle. We will we will talk about your books again in next episode. Uh, but right now, I want you to encourage you if you want to learn more on leadership and uh, especially uh, Bible-based leadership. So I want to encourage you to go to this, uh, Michelle, uh, Sister Michelle, if you can please share the link in the comments again, I will put on the screen and you can uh, you can visit this uh, Apostle uh, Prince uh, bookstore dot uh, you will you will see the comments soon. So we will we will encourage you to please buy the book and lead and gain the knowledge, gain wisdom and understanding 
and uh, we can honor man of God this way, buying the book and blessing him. So here is the uh, link. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Please go to this uh, uh, link, Apostle Prince uh, Bookstore, Prince Bookstore. Uh, so you can see the link on your on the screen right now, and you can please write down, or you can see in the comments as well. So, man of God, we have a uh, 15 minutes. If you can please, uh, you can see see the names. If God is giving you word for anyone or uh, cooperative word or any word of knowledge, word, uh, please, you have all freedom to do. All right, let's just begin talking for a few minutes and see how the Lord leads us. Shabranamozi, Erakazobri, Kozebri. Oh, everyone, wherever you are, if you can speak in tongues, speak in tongues. But if you can speak in tongues, speak in the language that it can understand. Ele baba bazia e chato ze chato ando chini banu ze chato e zana mali zentro na li kendo e ma gandu ze chala bazuzia e zuzia e zuzia Lord of all the earth we give you all the praise we give you all the honor we give you all adoration ele baba ze chale bando Lord, we the Spirit of God put in me, let's pray for Ukraine. Ukraine, yes, Ukraine mm. is Hambaza Suzika. It's the nation in Europe that have the, the largest Pentecostal churches. Mm. And um, the devil wanted to, the devil is trying to destroy that spiritual heritage. heritage. But I know this man will carry their faith to the to other nations. Sure. There's going to be more revival in Europe. The devil thinks that he's trying to destroy Europe, trying to destroy Ukraine. But I'm telling you, what is going to happen? These men will take their faith to other cities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's going to be tossed more revival, more fire, because sure. all these believers moving to different city is mm -hmm. taking their faith to those cities. Now, mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's pray for Ukraine. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless you, oh Father, for every soul in Ukraine. We thank you for the families of people that have oh, have lost their loved ones. We pray for strength. We pray for grace. We pray for power. We pray for God for more than we pray for protection. Lord, Ukraine is a nation after your own heart. Ukraine is a nation where you have raised men and women. Therefore, I pray for the city of Ukraine in the name of Jesus. Yes, Let the hand of God protect Ukraine. Let the yes, Spirit Lord. of God protect Ukraine. We oh, ask for angel of the church all over the whole world to move down to Ukraine and begin to fight for Ukraine. Lord, we pray for protection of every church in Ukraine. Father, we pray for protection of ministers. We pray for protection of pastors. Mm. We pray for protection of believers. We pray for protection of all the evangelists, the prophets. Father, we are in the hour in the name of Jesus. Mm. Yes, we Lord. decree and we declare that what the enemy has done will not be able to break the church in Europe. Mm. The church will, will once again become stronger like yes, never Lord. before. After Shut this up. time and season, 
Mm. We pray that in the church we grow in multitude, we grow in number, record number. Father, yes. may this suffering, may mm. this disaster, may this pain open up mm. layers of revival in mm. Europe, layers of revival yes. in Ukraine. In the yes. name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for the president of Ukraine, Zelensky. We pray in the name of Jesus yes. that he will live in encounter God yes. in this time and season. Father, we pray for an encounter and we pray for protection of that man may they not cut him off we refuse oh god any mm. we refuse any disaster mm. against his life and his family we pray yes. for his preservation of the life of this man we mm. join all our brothers and sisters that are watching yes we pray for preservation of zelensky and we decree in the name of mm. jesus that he will encounter god we even pray yes. for an angelic encounter Canter for this man, we pray for sleep, we pray for Namazika to Kalaka to Kata for the remodeling of his mind. Yes. So, Lord, remove fear Yala. from him, give him Shuba. the grace he needs to lead in the name of Jesus. Shaba, oh Lord, Lord, I'm praying for Sherry Gata. Share it together. You just tap an encounter. Mm. encounter. Yeah. I pray that that, that yeah. encounter is your portion. Mm. The Lord will bring you into realms you've never known, into realms you've never seen, and mm. realms you've never been before. As you, Irima, Alizo, Ze, Irana, Basili, Chato, Preneando, I decree and I pray over you. Sherry Gada, Richardson, I'm praying for an uncommon encounter for you today in the name of Jesus. Even as you continue to come on to this platform, I believe you keep coming here to learn, to support, and to be part of what God is doing. I feel mm. in my spirit, God will also release men and women to gather mm. around you to support what you do in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Jackie Aline. In the name of Jesus. This is the word that's coming into my heart. I don't know why. When I saw that name, it came to my heart, but I'm, I'm trying to resist it. But I just have to pray. I pray for long life. Now, it's short yeah, Paladia. Mm -hmm. I pray for long life for you, Jacqueline. And I decree that any plan of the devil to lay hands on you is cut off from the root in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus. Shabba. Shabba. I put a mark of longevity on you, Jacqueline. I put mm. a match of uncommon grace on you. Ajaku pre elehe zuli brani kozoni elizana brana. I pray for covering of the Holy Ghost. I pray for covering of the blood of Jesus. Any plot of the enemy to lazaku zili kapatia to lay hands on you is neutralized. It's yeah. a, a terminated, raised, mm. and deleted in mm. the name of Jesus. Yes. You will live yeah. long to bring glory to God. You yes. will fulfill your calling and your ministry. Gloriously, mm. says the Lord. It's the name of Jesus. Ilikando, Mili Cabrado, Zika Lazia, Ezuzi Lika Razuma, Ezezelim Branaka Zosia, Ezili Cambraniala, Alazose Manose Kiliando, Suzu Ele and Zose Bralizia, Ezelika Zose in Brenizolia, Ezuzu Candosia. Lord, I'm praying for honey. Madison, Zuli, brother, I'm asking God for an encounter, revelational encounter. Oh, la, na, 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 na. Annie Madison, mm -hmm. Annie Madison, mm -hmm. do you have anything to do with ministry? Mm -hmm. Annie Madison, do you have anything to do with ministry? Mm -hmm. Are you in ministry? Or do you have anything? Or do you serve in ministry? Please, are you able to comment? Talazoma Asiana. Ozi Talu Zebrali, Lord, I pray for your daughter, Honey Madison or Madison, for the glory of the later days.
Let the glory of the later days be greater than the former in your life. Yeah, Honey, if the Lord say, forget the former things, see, mm. I will do a new thing. Amen. I'm asking God to open up realms you've never enjoyed, realms you've mm. never experienced, realms you've never encountered. In the yeah. name of Jesus, let this realm be opened up unto you. Yes. Kasa, encounter God in your calling and ministry. And let mm. God do a new thing in your life. In the name of Jesus. There yes. is no distance to the power of God. There is no distance to the power of prayer. In has oh, oh, Zakarab, in has a prayer in Denmark. In, mm. in, in a has a prayer in Denmark prophetic. Okay, so so she is a ministry. She's trying to say she's a ministry. Yeah. So, she's in the ministry. Yeah. A has a prayer in them. Yeah, I'm feeling her, honey, Shashu, Shipina, Elizado. The Lord mm. will bring you into a realm of revelation that Shoot. you've never been before. Mm. And I'm praying that Shanu, Shaniha, and do Pralika too. That the Bible will be made, it will, oh. will become, will not just be like a letter to you. The Bible says, mm. let the kill it, but the spirit Ooh, give it life. God will unveil his word unto you, you will yeah. suddenly turn into a wordite because sure, you begin to see the word of God, the scripture from a new realm. God mm -hmm. wants to expose you to this realm in order to be able to do his ministry effectively. And they said, I also think that at the time or now, you're praying for Lord, you've been praying, Lord, teach me your word. Lord, mm -hmm. teach me your word. The Lord said that yes, prayer Lord. you've been praying, I have answered it because I will begin to reveal myself to you. I will begin to reveal my word to you in the same vein you have prayed, says the Lord. Basilia, Pastor Kennedy. The Lord said, keep the zeal ablaze. Keep your zeal ablaze. He said, don't reduce it because those things you've been crying. <laughs> crying out for me to do he said they are yeah, installed for you mm. they are already approved but Shuba. keep my zeal ablaze mm. my zeal and you keep it ablaze everything you have ever cried I will fulfill it I will do it unto you in your own in your own eyes I will do unto you not after you mm. in your own time I will reveal myself to you and I'm going to bring men and women into your life that will love you for who you are, not what you're doing for them, but for who you mm -hmm. are in God, says mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even as you make that comment, his word is the bread. You say his word is the bread of life. As mm. I look at that comment, I just suddenly felt in my spirit that she let me like you love the word of God. Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You love the word of God. And anytime you don't read the word, it's fit to cry. Mm. You are somebody that your revelation, you find it through the word. Uh. But um, the devil will do everything to reduce your words intact so that you will not be able to grab some mm. of the things you you grab from the world because anytime you read the word it's like your spirit refreshes but from mm. time to time you get too busy somehow to do it because the enemy knows that that is where your strength lies and mm. that's where your your power lies so i'm asking god for a special grace philomena philomena or philomena Philo, oh, yeah. <laughs> you ask, you know, one of my half sister, it goes by that name, Philo Mina. I don't know why I'm struggling to call it, but I, I am praying for you, women of God, Shalu Zebrianto, that the grace of, of these later days, the grace of mm -hmm. the dispensation will come upon your life. 
I believe there is something God is doing in this dispensation of grace that is even more deeper than what we've seen and witnessed in the past. I'm praying that grace of word and tech, grace of word and canter on your life, Philomila, in the name of Jesus. Everyone on this platform. It doesn't matter what you're believing God for. There is no distance to the power of God. There's no distance to the anointing. There's no distance to the oil of God. Mm. How would people that practice that practice witchcraft can be in their city and invoke your spirit? Mm. Huh? If they can be able to do that, that means the power of God can do much more. So wherever you are, whether you're believing God for finances, you're believing God for, 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 for ministry breakthrough, you're believing God for discovery of your calling or for duration, I'm asking for precious mantle from above to rest on you for new discoveries and creativity in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, Lord, I thank you for mutual your daughter, this daughter of yours. Father, she will serve you to the end. Every iota of grace mm. on her life will manifest. Sure, I break God. every barrier before you, Mitchell, and I raise you up the platform you've never ever dreamed. I bring mm. you is perfectly the platform, the platform no one in your family mm. have enjoyed before. I usher yeah. you in the platform spiritually because you are you have made yourself available, says the Lord. Rema Zuzu Kiliha Basuzi Ele Kasuna Janinio Kapadio. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Living God, for your word. Thank you for for this mm. moment we have with you. Thank you for yes, the presence, Lord. release. Thank you for your servant, your Shubha servant Shubha whom you love, your servant whom you are pleased with in this nation, Pastor Mark. I know that the your the layers of or, or the layers of what you are about to open up on his behalf is something that he has never ever seen nor mm. tasted in his lifetime. Yes, man Lord. of God, God will pour a blessing that you will not only enjoy, but your children will take over from you. Amen. Amen. Robert Amen. Say, a, 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 a success without a success, so it's not a success at all. But God is going to give you a success. That we carry the wings of success in this mm. nation. Amen. Not, the demons in this nation will not have right over you. They will sure never that. succeed. Everything mm. God has brought you and your wife to do, you shall mm. fulfill. Say the Lord. I feel in my heart, so many people have come to the platform and release all sort of prophetic word over your life and ministry. I feel in my heart, the Lord is saying, write every word, mm. every word. Every time you receive a word, write it down. Mm. Proclaim it, confess it, believe it, because all, all the world been released from different mantles, from all, from 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 variety of mantles will surely become. Mm. It will surely take place. It will surely mm. manifest, because yeah. you have obeyed the Lord. The Lord have chosen to honor you in this time and season, in the name of Jesus. So, Amen. Baba, so. Oh, Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, man of God. Apostle, it was so powerful. I'm so blessed today. And thank you for your time. So, Father, we praise you and we thank you for Apostle, for his family, for his ministry. And Lord, we speak your favor, more favor, increase over, in, over his life, over his family in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, my Karabasho to Korobo. See, I, I sense in my spirit that Lord is going to give you a fresh revelation and God is going to release over you to write more books in Jesus' mighty name. I feel that Lord. Is giving, going to give you a a, a different or uh, I know the before you wrote book on the leadership, but Lord said I'm going to give you a key, many keys to unlock because people don't understand in the spirit uh, uh, or the uh, in the spirit realm the the uh, the importance of leaders so the lord saying that i'm going to give you the key i'm going to yeah. you're going to even when you will be sleeping i'm you're going to download so much stuff so be open in jesus might name. so father we thank you for apostle prince and for his family and his ministry in jesus might name we bless you lord amen mm, amen amen <laughs> Wow, praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, you are all important, Pastor Kennedy, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Cliff, 
and all those brothers and sisters all over the world watching and those who will watch this video later. We bless you all and may the shalom, blessing and peace of God be with you in Jesus name. Amen. And Amen. see you tomorrow 4 p.m. New Zealand time. Pastor Felicity and I will be doing prophetic, uh, prophetic flow. With all of you, we will be sharing a word, uh, word of encouragement and also we will be releasing prophetic whatever Lord will put in our heart uh, tomorrow. And we are open to the Holy Spirit and we want to obey the Holy Spirit. That's why we are coming online every day. And I'm so blessed to obey God because what we are bringing, teaching through men and women of God uh, on this platform really impacting even my personal life. I'm encouraged so much by all teachings, all men and women of doing, uh, women of God's doing. And even what Apostle just uh, preached today has really touched my heart. Apostle, you want to say anything? Yeah, I just want to encourage um, Jacqueline. Jacqueline said, not going to lie, that word freaked me out. <laughs> now, Jacqueline, I sometimes when, when a word is given, God gives a word of what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. Hmm. And any time a word is given of that nature, it means there is something you may not even know God is doing in, in the spirit beyond you. You know? And, and when a word is releasing, that word that word travels beyond you to correct some things in the spirit, even if you don't feel that way. Yeah. So I want yeah. you not to be, not, don't, get, <laughs> don't get freaked out. God is on the move on your behalf in Jesus name. Yes, amen. 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 I, I just sense in peace in my spirit, so much peace. The Lord is even on this teaching today and on this broadcast. I'm sensing strong peace of God. So those who really need peace in your spirit, in your soul right now, just receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So bless you all and see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. New Zealand time. Don't miss tomorrow broadcast as well. Blessings.